welcome to another STEM tutorial. Today we'll be discussing polynomial interpolation and we'll be looking at Newton's divided difference interpolation method. We'll divide this tutorial into three sections. In the first section, we'll explain the concept of Newton's divided difference to help you understand where the equations are coming from. In the second section, we'll practice polynomial interpolation together with an example. In the third section, we'll leave you with a practice problem. So let's get started. To help understand polynomial interpolation, we'll discuss the very basics first. Here you see the equation for an nth order polynomial. So here if we only consider the first two terms, we see that we just have the equation for a line, so for a first order polynomial. So you can see that this has the form at y equals mx plus b again. So here we have our slope and here we have our y-intercept, it's just a different variable name. Here you can see with the first three terms, we have the equation for a quadratic, so our second order polynomial. And so we generalize this equation up to an nth order polynomial. So with x up to the power of n. Depending on the order of your polynomial, you need a certain amount of data points to determine the shape of your polynomial itself. So what do I mean by this and what does this mean for polynomial interpolation? So let's imagine that you wanted to draw a line on this graph here. To be able to draw the line on your graph, you're going to need two data points to help define your slope and y-intercept. So this is very basic and I won't cover linear interpolation, but it's just to help you understand the concept that I'm trying to get at in a moment. So like I said, to draw this line or to complete a linear interpolation, you're going to need two data points to describe the location of your line. So we'll just write down two data points for a line or a first order polynomial. What if we wanted to draw a quadratic? So again here I've plotted my xy axis and to be able to describe a quadratic you can't just use two data points, we of course need three. So here I'll put together three data points and you can use three data points to help describe your quadratic curve. And you'll need three data points to complete a second order polynomial interpolation with your quadratic function. So with this, you should start to see a trend here. And this is something that I want to address. The first important point is that if you want to complete an nth order interpolation, you'll need n plus one data points. So like you can see here for the quadratic, a second order interpolation, so the quadratic function, requires two plus one, which is three data points. And you can note that in an interpolation, your polynomial function will pass through your specified data points. So knowing this, let's discuss how you can determine the coefficients of your polynomial for your polynomial interpolation. So on this slide, you can again see that I've written down the equation for our nth order polynomial that we just discussed. And to help us understand the Newton's divided difference method, we're now going to just consider a quadratic function. So we'll only consider the first three terms here of our function and we'll ignore the rest. So what you may have learned in your course or in university is that there's another way of writing your quadratic function. And I'll write it down in a moment since it'll help us derive the Newton's divided difference method. So our function here can be written as follows. So you can write that your f of x equals some coefficient, we'll call it b naught plus b1 times the difference between your x value point minus your first x value data point plus b2 times again your arbitrary x value data point minus the value of your first x data point which we'll define with x naught so x0 and then times your arbitrary x value minus the x value of your second data point but since we're starting to count with zero we'll call it x1. And so this polynomial here is the exact same as above. And you can see that these two polynomials are the exact same by substituting these variables here into this above equation. And we won't do this here. We'll trust that our literature is correct and this holds true. So now we'll derive the divided difference interpolation equations for our quadratic function. So we know that if we have our quadratic function, which I'll just draw down here, 
we need to have three data points to describe our quadratic interpolation function. And I'll just write down here a three point. So we're gonna to refer to it as x0, x1, x2. And our interpolation function is going to pass directly through our points here. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve for these three coefficients by substituting in that our arbitrary x value equals x0 and then x1 and x2 to solve for our coefficients. So we'll look at the first case where x is going to equal x naught. And so you see if we substitute in that our x equals x naught here, this value is going to go to zero. And the same goes here, that this value is going to go to zero. And we're left with the fact that our f of x naught is equal to b zero. So our, if we had this case, our f of x zero will equal b zero. So we've already solved for our first coefficient. If we look at the case that our x is going to equal x one, so our data point down here, if we substitute this again into this expression here, we're going to get that our f of x1 will equal our b0, which we know equals our f of x of 0. So we'll just substitute right away our f of x of 0 plus our b1. And again, we're substituting this x with a value of x1. So it'll be x1 minus x0. And this second term here is going to fall away because x1 minus x1 goes to 0 if we substitute this x with x1. And so we can simply rearrange here for our coefficient b1. And we get that our f of x1 minus f of x0 over x1 minus x0 equals our b1. So now we've solved for our coefficient b0 and b1. The last coefficient we need to solve for is for b2. So here we're going to say that our x value equals x2. So our x equals x2. And now we need to consider all three terms. So we aren't going to have any of these terms cancelling. So we don't have any x2 minus x2s. So we would substitute our x for x2 in this function and rearrange. And I don't have very much room left here on my slide. So I'll just write down what we would get as a solution because it's pretty long. We would get, if we substitute in x equals x2, that our b2 equals our f of x2 minus our f of x of 1 divided by our x2 minus x1. Then we would subtract f of x of 1 minus f of x of 0 or f of x naught divided by x1 minus x0. And this whole term will be divided by x2 minus x0. So with this, we've solved for our coefficients for our polynomial function. And there's one last item that I'd like to point out. This term here, so this difference in y values over difference in x values, is often referred to as a finite difference. So this term here is called our first finite difference. And if we look at the expression for our b2, you'll see that we have two finite difference terms, and we're essentially taking the finite difference of these finite differences. So this term here is called our second finite difference. And this will be important to keep in mind when we move on to doing an example together. And one last item to note is, as you could expect, if you were to extend this to complete a polynomial interpolation for a cubic function, we wouldn't only have two finite differences, but we would have a third finite difference. And this is where the Newton's divided difference has a pattern that we can utilize for solving our examples. And we'll show you how you can do this without having to memorize all of these equations completely in an example that we'll complete together now. 
So having covered the background for Newton's divided difference, let's solve an example together. So in this example, we're asked to fit a second order Newton interpolating polynomial to the data given here. And as a second step, we're asked to interpolate for x equals two. So we'll see that for a second order Newton interpolating polynomial, we're given the three data points that we require. And in this table, we've indicated our subscript i, we have our x data, and we have our corresponding f of x data. And to solve this example by hand, what I recommend you do is you extend your table for a first finite difference column and a second finite difference column, since we'll be using this to solve for our polynomial without having to write down all the equations. And keep in mind that for a second order Newton interpolating polynomial, we need up to our second finite difference, so two columns. If we had a third order polynomial, so a cubic function, we would require a third column for our third finite difference. So let's just start solving this together and then you'll catch on. So what we'll do is we'll calculate our first finite difference. And to do this, we'll consider the equation that I've written above. What we're going to do is we're going to take the difference between our two f of x values and divide it by the difference of our two x values. So we're going to do 13 minus three divided by three minus one, which will equal 10 over two which equals a value of five. And then we'll do the same for our other two, f of x and x values. So we'll have 21 minus 13 over four minus three. And so we have eight over one, which equals a value of eight. So with this, we solve for our first finite difference values. Now we're going to go on to solving for our second finite difference values. So again, I'm going to draw this little arrowhead here. And for the second finite difference value, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the difference between these two first finite difference values, so eight minus five. And for our x values, we're going to follow the rule that we get our first x value by going down, over, and down again. And we see that we arrive by x value of four. So with every column, you always move down one level. So we get a value of four. And then we subtract our x value, which we get by moving up over and moving up again. So here we move up one level with every column. And then we get an x value of one. And so when we solve this three over three, we get a value of one. And what you'll notice is that with this method, we get our coefficients for the polynomial that we had written down in the previous section. So as you can recall, the polynomial that we had written down in the previous section equaled as follows. And we had solved for our b naught, b1, and b2. And we had said that our b naught simply equals our f of x naught. And you'll see that we have the value here in our table. This is our b naught. We had shown that our b1 equals our first finite difference value here. So with this table, we've also solved for our b1. And our b2 was the big long term that considered the second finite difference. So the finite difference between these two values, which we've solved for here. So this is our B2. So with this table and with this concept, we can write down our polynomial. So our F of X polynomial will equal our B naught three plus five for our B1, X minus our X of naught, which we know equals one, so one, plus our b2, which we calculated to equal one, one times x minus x naught, which we again know equals one, times x minus x of one. So we know for iteration i equals one, our x value equals three. So with this, we solve for the first part of the question and we have our second order Newton interpolating polynomial. So as a second step, we now need to interpolate for x equals two. And so then if we substitute in that our f of x equals two, so we're just going to substitute that this x value equals two everywhere, we're going to get that, and I'll write it over here, I'm running out of room, that'll equal three plus five times two minus one plus one times two minus one, two minus three. So we'll get that our f 
at x equals 2 will equal a value of 7. And so with this, we've interpolated our quadratic polynomial to find out that when our x equals 2, our y or f of x value equals 7. One last item that I'd like to point out is that for polynomial interpolation, you don't have to make sure that your x values are evenly spaced. So as you can see, our first x values didn't equal 1, 2, 3, but the first difference was a value of 2, and the second difference was a value of 1. And this is fine, you don't require evenly spaced data to complete your interpolation. To conclude today's tutorial, we'll provide you with the following practice problem. In this practice problem, you're asked to fit a third order Newton interpolating polynomial to the data below. And afterwards, you're asked to interpolate for a value of x equals 1.5. So here you can also see that we've provided you with the function for a cubic Newton polynomial. So you see that you need to determine the coefficients b0, b1, b2, and b3. And you can use the method we've just shown you in the previous example. We'll post the solution to this practice problem on our website, stem-tutorials.com. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. This wraps up today's tutorial. If you found this tutorial helpful, please help spread the word by hitting like and subscribing below. For more tutorials and practice problems, feel free to check out our playlists or our website stem-tutorials.com. Thanks for joining us today.